Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Face in the Crowd. Today we'll be interviewing two of CMU's marching band's rank captains. As a rate captain, we help teach, like uh, I take control of the snare line, so I teach snare drum technique. I'll help rewrite any of the parts that need to be written, pick out like certain exercises, things like that. Writing music, teaching technique, teaching marching, and making sure that all the students are always on top of everything that they're supposed to be doing. During the season, it's, it's like cleaning, making sure everyone's doing the stuff they're doing, you know. It's like the captain of any other sport. It's like you're just making sure everyone's doing their responsibilities when they're supposed to be doing them. Drumline has two different components. There's battery and there's pit. The battery consists of snare drum, bass drum, tenors, and cymbals, and pit consists of mallet instruments, which they do not march. There's different importances for each drum because there's different voicings for each one of them. Snare drum has a higher pitch sound, and there's actually snares underneath the drum, which can create a different resonance. Tenors have different pitch drums, and basses have different pitches as well, but each pitch is played by a different person. I play bass drum, and it's definitely my favorite because you have to collaborate with all the different people in your section. A lot of kids in the band are music majors, but um, I'm a neuroscience major, so in the future I want to go to grad school um, for like clinical neuropsychology, which is like helping people recover from brain injuries and things like that. It's a little bit different because like I really enjoy music, but I also have a passion for learning about how the brain works and things like that. So I guess you could kind of combine both of them together. Like it helps me drum when I know like how the brain works and how like you can memorize music and how you can learn technique and how people uh, learn different ways so you can kind of gear practices towards it so you can incorporate that into, I guess, uh, snare drum teaching. And then the motion is just straight up and then straight down. There you okay, go. Left hand's enough. a little, little trickier. Um, oh what we're going to do is you're going to take the stick and put it right here in the crevice of your thumb, right? And then wrap your pointer finger around and then set that right on top. And then this bottom one touches like right where, right where the skin meets the nail. Yep, mm -hmm. just curl it around. Yep, perfect, just like that. Put your pointer finger on top. And this one's tricky. This one's like turning a doorknob. So okay. if you, when you go to play, you got to imagine that you're turning a doorknob and that's how you would lift the stick. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm an art major. My concentration is 2D and specifically photography. I plan on having a photography studio after I graduate from college and I'm actually planning on holding on to the drum line and still teaching outside of that. Symbol technique, basically you just want to keep your fingers spread apart because it creates a lot of tension on the symbol and it helps you control it a lot more. And then you just hold it up in front of you. Okay. So your bicep is flat with the ground and then you push it away from you. It's a lot of hard work that people don't expect. Two to three hour long practices a day, every day. We have a uh, two o'clock kickoff on a Saturday. We have to be at the stadium at 6 a.m. in the morning and we don't get to leave there till about 9 p.m. And it's only a one credit class. So you're not, you're not getting the five credits or anything that you're actually putting that time in. It's the people that are here want to be here. And it's not just, you know, you're taking a class to get credit. It's everyone has a passion for it and everyone works really hard to like accomplish their goals, I guess, so. My favorite part of marching band is the family because when you spend so much time with 200 of your closest friends, you create this bond and they become more of a family than friends. Something like that.